Who's heard the advice, follow your passion? You may have been told you should find your passion, do a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Sounds blissful, right? Well, growing up as a child, uh, one of my early passions was football. I loved the game of football. I loved the fact that I could compete. I loved the discipline it instilled in me to prepare. Tough losses helped mold my character and enabled me to overcome adversity. When I was 12, I was named a team captain, and I was put into a leadership position from a young age, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. And after I was done playing football in high school, I was told it was time to grow up, and I entered university as a bright-eyed 17-year-old without a clue what he was going to do. And I entered uh, university orientation, and the dean was going around and asking everybody what they wanted to do after school. And I was very nervous, I had no idea. And I heard responses like marketing executive, investment banker, human resources professional, supply chain, and uh, I was a little overwhelmed in drawing a blank. Next thing I knew, the dean was addressing me and I blurted out, I'm gonna own a pro football team. And there were some whispers amongst the crowd. And uh, I didn't think it was that hard or that ambitious at the time because I had already owned a successful NFL franchise in my Sony PlayStation version of Madden 2003. <laughs> How hard could it be, right? Well, about two years into my university career, uh, reality had set in and my uh, inadequate academic preparation had caught up to me and I received a letter notifying me that I was on academic probation and in order to avoid expulsion, I had to get a special request from the dean in order to stay in school. And I summoned up the courage with my chin tucked deep into my chest, and I took the elevator up to her fourth floor office. I had this feeling of disappointment of how I would explain this to my family. Uh, my mind raced of memories of being sent to the principal's office as a elementary school student. My stomach was up in my throat, and I clutched the piece of paper that sealed my fate. And I entered her office and sat in the chair, sunk deep across from her, and handed her the paper. The dean grabbed the paper and looked at me. She signed it, handed it back to me, and said, I believe in you, Dan. So that day I left her office and I made a choice, and I dedicated myself to my studies. And I went to every office tutorial, and I got a peer tutor, went early to class, sat in the front of the room, went to office hours, and in the final two years, I went and took a full course load during both summers so I could graduate with my peers in four years. One of the greatest moments to this point in my life was walking across that stage as a part of the first graduating class and seeing Dean Shell and being able to thank her personally and give her a hug. No sooner was I brought back to reality when one of my family members said, so you graduated, do you have a job yet? And of course I did not have a job and still had no idea what I was gonna do. It took a few months, but I was presented with an opportunity and took the first job that was offered to me. And it was an entry level position in the financial industry. And I took it because there was nothing else available. Uh, it was the fall of 2007, and as we would come to learn later, after the Maybe third week of my first day on the job was the U.S. markets topping out and the beginning of the credit crisis and financial great recession, as they say. About two years in, I was struggling. I was frustrated, discouraged. Uh, these were interesting times, they said. Uh, I should be lucky to have a job. Uh, but I was challenged and demoralized by my failure and underperformance. I started neglecting my own personal development and uh, unhealthy habits and seemingly less complacently crept into my life. I went home to seek comfort food and watch hours of mindless TV. I dreaded going into the office. And it was a very confusing time for me because from day one I was very diligent with my money. I saved and I was prudently investing while there was proverbial blood in the streets. Uh, I had money, I was financially free, but I was the most miserable uh, that I'd ever been in my life. Uh, about just under three years into my career, I, I gave up. 
and I quit. And it was a, a very difficult time, but uh, the only thing that mattered was that I needed to get happy and get help. I still wasn't sure what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, it didn't matter, really. Um, su suffering from my feeling of failure, I sought out purpose in my life. So I found myself back at my old high school volunteering as a football coach. And this reinvigorated me. Uh, I felt compelled to have a positive impact in the lives of young people. And I wanted to teach them the lessons that the game of football had taught me. And as the season went by, I started to realize it was less and less likely that I was going to be re-entering the world of finance. And uh, I decided, well, what am I going to do? You know, this was at a crossroads. And I was watching a movie one night, and one of the characters in the movie was talking about an experience he had in his own adolescence of the teacher asking, well, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? Now, I certainly didn't have a million dollars, uh, far from it, but I was financially comfortable for the time being and thought uh, all I wanted to do was coach football. And so that's what I decided to do. Now, you can imagine the reaction from, from friends and family. There was some backlash, and some of my closest colleagues criticized me, they doubted me, and belittled my ambitions. And some of my strongest supporters uh, were suddenly bombarding me with questions of, you know, what are you doing with your life? Um, family referred to me as a drifter, asked me, hey, what was I thinking? How was I going to live, support myself? Why don't you get a real job? How are you going to be a football coach? You didn't play pro football. You didn't even play college football. These were all valid questions that I didn't have answers to. And there were times where I doubted myself and thought, what if they were right? But undeterred, I had made a choice. And I was going to give it all I got. So I committed myself and I said I was going to write down every single goal I had. I wrote down why those goals were important to me. I wrote down every obstacle that was in my way. I started st studying successful coaches because I wanted to know why they were great. I learned everything I could, thought about all of the knowledge I needed to gain, experience I needed to acquire, people I needed in my life to help me. So I got to work. I started taking courses, certifications, attended every camp and clinic I could find. I gassed up the car and hit the road. On one of these road trips, I was couch surfing. Another road trip, I went over 3,000 kilometers, uh, spanning 10 states in 12 days in order to visit some of the top football programs in North America. I looked for every opportunity I could to learn and grow. I took a lot of notes and asked a ton of questions. Early on, I was experiencing a little bit of a little bit of success and there was some support, positive feedback. Some of the teams I was working with started to have some success, but there were still some family and peers that were cautioning me because they had not seen what they thought was visible progress. And around the time, one of the first individuals I was working with was in his final year of high school and he was having a very good season. He, his team has made it to the league championships and uh, it was about the middle of November, it was unusually cold, even by our standards. And a couple days before the game, I started feeling a little under the weather. And uh, I figured, well, if I can't make it, I'm, I'm just going to let him know that I'm not going to be able to be at the game. The next day, uh, I was very ill, had a very bad flu and was bedridden. And I reluctantly called the young man and said, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to make it, I'm sick. And I said, no worries, coach. You know, we're going to go get the W, make sure you get well, and we'll talk to you next week. The day of the game, uh, I was in bed, and uh, being alone with my thoughts wandering in my mind all day uh, wasn't helpful. And I dragged myself out of bed, despite my body pleasing, and uh, I threw on layers as if I was venturing off to some sort of Arctic expedition and made my way to the game. I arrived to the game late, just 10 minutes left, and I had the opportunity to witness him and his team win the game and become league champions. 
and par uh, parents started leaving the stands and going to the field so that they can greet their sons, congratulate them, and uh, share in their success. And I was uh, in a weakened state, I was thinking more so about just getting home and getting back into bed. So I thought I would go down to the field and say hi and be on my way. And as I entered the field, uh, I was all draped up. I had a scarf and hood over, and I could see him squinting as I approached him. And I will never forget the look that was in his eyes and how they lit up when he saw me there. He threw himself into my arms and we embraced. His parents weren't, weren't at the game. I'm a football coach, and this January will mark the fifth anniversary since I started my own business. And I've stumbled and fell numerous times, and I will sure to be stumbled and fall in the future again. But these were not failures. These were opportunities for growth. So when I think about finding something you love and you'll never have to work a, a day in your life, In order to do what you love, you must work harder than you've ever worked in your life. Passion is not enough. Passion is not enough. Only work works. And on the field, I try to impart these same lessons to the young men that I coach. You must be disciplined and prepared, focused on your personal development. You must choose to hold yourself to the highest standard and be accountable to be an integral person in society of high character. You need to celebrate success and embrace failure, but effort and will are non-negotiable. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody want to ask Dan some questions? Or do we just want to go hit the field and tackle something? <laughs> <laughs> Not pumped up. I think it's more of a comment or yes. feedback. You're talking about passion. Mm. That's, that is definitely part of it. Mm -hmm. When you were saying that, I'm, I'm in the field that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And until you, if you find that, you're like, it is work. Yes. But you're putting in that extra, that extra work, that extra effort. And I think the rewards that you get back are you can't well, quantify it. It's, right. It's, it's, it's incredible. You see, you might see, you know, the, those guys working their butts off and training so hard, and that must just make all the work that you've done, you see, come back to you. Extremely, yes. It's, it's uh, very gratifying. So, some feedback that I actually I appreciate that, so. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.